What's up, I'm Ejem, and welcome back to my channel. For the past couple weeks, I've been talking about the Evo API, and this video is literally no different. For this video, I'm going to be talking about something that I never really expected that I would ever use for a personal project, but while I was working on the Evo API, I realized I needed this thing in order to unblock myself and to continue developing the API. And that thing is server-side rendering. So for those of you who aren't too familiar with server-side rendering, it's another rendering approach that's an alternative to client-side rendering. With SSR, what you do is you render your application on the server side and then you serve the built version of your application over to the client side which then renders your application and browser. The reason for this approach is that you have better load times and it's even better for SEO optimization because your application is already built on the server and then once it makes it to the browser you're already populating your browser with contentful information like text, images, and all kind of stuff. But why did I decide to start using server-side rendering for the Evo API? If you take a closer look at the Evo API homepage, you can actually see that there's a try it out section that allows you to enter in a keyword. And then once you submit, you can see all the results you would be getting back from the API if you signed up for a developer token. I really like this feature of the homepage because it gives a lot of people the ability to play around with the API before they sign up with a developer token and start using it for their own personal projects. But I soon realized after I implemented developer tokens that all consuming applications of the API including the API homepage itself, needed to start using API keys and its headers in order to receive requested resources. So at first, what I thought I would do would just be make the network request on the client side and then get all the words, no problem. But the issue with that approach is that I would be exposing my developer token on the client side, so any savvy engineer would just be able to go to the networks tab in their browser and see my personal API token, and they can start using it for their own applications without having to sign up which can compromise the security of the API homepage. So after doing a little bit of brainstorming and research about what the best and quickest solution for this problem would be, I thought to myself, why not just server-side render the homepage? If I server-side render the homepage, I'd be able to make these network requests on the server side, hiding these requests from the client, meaning that I could still use my API token with no problem, and then build my application on the server side, send it over to the client, which will then have all the words that it looks like it requested on the client side, but in reality, it was requested on the server side. So luckily for me, I was already using Next.js for the API's homepage, and Next.js makes it extremely easy to generate sites, whether it's statically generated or rendered on the server side. So with Next.js, all I had to do was just add an extra function, which is the get server side props function, and then the component that's associated with that function is automatically server side rendered. There's no more configuration I have to do on my end. So let me walk you through the technical implementation of how this works. So inside of the Evo API project, if we go into the Explorer, we can actually see that inside of our source directory, there is a directory called pages, which is dedicated to Next.js. So Next.js, when it's building the application, looks inside of this directory to build out our homepage. If we go to app.js, this is the home page of our application. And we can see everything from the nav bar and then the little intro text. But specifically, what's going on here is that I have my demo section, which is responsible for rendering out this try it out section. If we take a closer look at the demo component, we can see that we're passing in two props, which is the search word, which is the word that someone types in in this input bar, and then the words result, which is an array of objects, which are words. So words would be this array of word objects. These two values come from the app component as props. But now we have to answer the question of where do these values come from? Inside of index.js, we're importing React, Axios, Constant, and our app component, which is our home page. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you can actually see that we're just exporting our app component. But before we're doing that, we actually pass in the props that we get from our next.js server side function. So for Next.js to be able to determine if a component is going to be server-side rendered, that component needs to export the function get server-side props. If it exports that function, Next.js handles the rest of server-side rendering logic by calling that function and then putting all the data that's generated from that function into the associated React component as that component's props. So at a high level, the purpose of this get server-side props function is to make a network request to the Evo API on the server side so I can still use my main key or my API key without the client side knowing what my key is. So for this first line, what's happening here is we're getting the query value that's coming from our context object that's given to us by Next.js. 
This context object includes a lot of helpful information about the current state of the application or the component that's being server-side rendered. We actually want to be able to get the query of the URL that is triggering the server-side render. The query in this case is anything that comes after the question mark. So our query would be word, which is equal to the word more. So if we go back in here, we can see query is an object with the word query, and we're reassigning word to search word, so it's a little bit clearer to read. If search word exists, meaning that someone tried to search for a word on the API homepage, what we're doing now is making an Axio request to get all words that match with our associated search word. API route will either be eboapi.com if we're deployed to our Heroku instance, or our local host, which is going to be at port 8080. So if we're running this locally, we can imagine that our API route will be localhost 8080 forward slash API v1 words and then with the new query keyword which is assigned to the value of search word. Then inside the header section of our Axios body I'm checking to see if we have a main key locally running in our Evo API. If main key does exist locally then we're going to pass in main key. If it doesn't exist then we're just going to pass over an empty object to our headers object. The reason why we have to spread out these values instead of just assigning process.env main key to x API key is because we don't want to pass in any empty values like undefined or null because I'll throw some errors on the Axios side. So once we define the structure of our Axios request, we're going to await it and then we're going to get a result body from that Axio call. We're going to destructure out the data that comes from the result and we're going to rename it to words to make it easier to handle. So now that we got all the words that are associated with our search word, we're going to pass this newfound data into our associated component, which is our app component. So Next.js is super specific with how you need to structure the final object that you return from get server set props. The structure has to be an object that has a props key, which is assigned to another object with all the data that you want to pass in to your app component as props. So search word and words are going to get passed into our app component as the search word and words props. We also handle other edge cases like if search word doesn't exist or if an error is thrown, then we just pass back this predefined props object where search word is empty. And then we provide an array that says an internal error has occurred. So this message will render inside of our response section if a server side error ever happened. So now if we go back to app.js, Hopefully it's starting to make a little bit more sense about where search word and words are coming from. So the demo component takes search word and words and passes it into itself as props again. So inside of demo.js, you can see that we're using search word and words to populate and render out this component as necessary. So you can see here that words gets passed into this JSON stringify as response body. And then we pass response body into this imported package JSON pretty which is responsible for formatting this pretty JSON object. So as I mentioned before, I was looking for a quick and easy solution to hiding API keys on the client side. Because this was the first solution that stuck, there's one major drawback, and that drawback is every time a user makes a request to search for Word inside the Try It Out section of the API homepage, the page will always refresh which isn't the best user experience, but I don't think it's a terrible experience given that we're securing the application by hiding API keys. So what I mean by this is if I type in car, for example, and I press submit, you can see that the entire page refreshes, but what we're seeing right here is all of the associated Word documents that match with our keyword. If we take a closer look at the network tab, we can also see that we're not making any network requests on the client side. It's whenever we type in a word, the whole page refreshes and we get a response back that provides us with the data embedded in the page. Server-side rendering makes the process of taking advantage of the API homepage a little bit harder because it's making all the network requests and building the application on the server side in a protected environment and then sending over the final look of the application to the client with everything the client needs to view the page for the first time. And I see all of this as a major benefit of server-side rendering beyond the performance benefits and the SEO benefits. A little fun fact, this try it out section was actually inspired by the Words API homepage that also allows you to try out the API without signing up for any developer tokens. So this is how I've been using server side rendering for the homepage to hide API tokens from the client side. There's probably a better solution to this problem, but it's been working for the Evo API right now. 
and I think with feature enhancements, it can get a lot better. If you have any questions about server-side rendering, Next.js, or anything that I mentioned in this video or previous videos, feel free to leave a comment and question in the comment section below, or you can also reach out to me on Twitter to send me a DM and ask me a question there. Also, if you want to contribute to the Ebo API, either as an editor, a translator, an engineer, marketer, designer, anything, a magician, you can sign up in the volunteer form that's linked in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see y'all in the next one.